traders, Raggy here. And in this update, we're going to talk about what happens when we have the wishy-washy kind of Monday that is not unusual after non-farm payroll. How do we find these day trades that might be a little bit out of the box, but still are very much tethered to the kind of action that we can see in the morning after the clearing that will jive with what's happening with the indices, with stocks, with the typical action that we would expect from the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow when it's just not there. In other words, what do we do when we can't find trades in our normal places? Okay, so with that scene being set, just sort of this wishy-washy market that is not unusual after non-farm payroll Friday, what we did is we started to look a little outside the box, but in markets like the Canadian dollar, which have sensitivity to what's going on in the stock market. And we'll start looking for setups that would be the same type of setups that we would trade for our equities. So on one hand, we have setups where we can find the market moving higher, coming back down to levels of support, and then playing the market to the upside. In other words, we bought the Canadian dollar, we sold the US dollar, which is what the long 6C futures position would be. All right, well, that's not the only place we can look. So some of the other places that we looked were places like crude oil. So that's not as disconnected. We know that crude oil could be a buy if we start to see a little clarity in equities, but we really didn't. So what do we do with crude? We decided to go with some long USO 47 strike calls. So as the USO was in a 30 cent range of support, starting aggressively at the 30 cent range, I'd say a little bit more conservatively between 15 and 20 cents and all the way down to the handle, to the double zero, this area was ripe for a long position. In fact, you know, having hindsight being 2020, rather than being maybe aggressive up here at 30, we could have also looked at 69. And actually both were, both were valid. So you can see down here, nice V-score low uh, in this area right? Two, two hits on those V-score lows, and then a nice Darvis low right in there. So lots of reasons to like the long side of, of the crude oil market. And then we had a nice little pop after that. Not, not huge, but a decent little pop after that. Again, on a day where it's so wishy-washy to be able to find a couple spots where we can put in small trades, low risk, and try to take advantage of a little bit of upside with more tolerance for sort of the noise, right? Um, you know, that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, I'll give you another great example. And this is this came from one of our members who understands my top-down style of looking at the indices, looking at the sectors, and then playing individual stocks. And I gotta I gotta brag on our group in the futures room because look, what do we know? If we're playing indices, we're also playing stocks. If we're playing stocks, we can understand relative outperforming sectors and then relative outperforming stocks. Beautiful breach retreat on Facebook. And these are the kind of things that I love to do with futures traders, which is to kind of let futures be the top-down approach to, hey, this is what the markets are doing broadly. Then let's look at the individual sectors. Then let's look at the heavily weighted stocks within them. And this is very much, to me, connected to a futures trading approach. And by the way, if you like this kind of approach, if you're thinking to yourself, yeah, how do I find a setup like a Facebook when the markets are as wishy-washy as they are um, on June this will be the 16th, June 16th, this month. That's a uh, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to be doing a webinar for this type of style. So just pencil it right now. I don't have the sign up link yet, but a lot of folks have been asking, yeah, Rog, how do you put on these kind of stock and ETF trades when you're also futures trading and you're looking at it right now? It means that in this case, we had a small buy in the crude oil market. We had a great buy in the Canadian dollar, already thinking out of the box. And then you take a few steps further down thinking, well, the NASDAQ was kind of holding its own, but choppy. What was relative outperforming within the NAS? And you know, you get names like Facebook and you get names like uh, Microsoft. And so this is what I want futures traders to understand. This is what I want all traders to understand that there are numerous opportunities to take advantage of when you don't limit yourself to specific symbols, but rather ask what are those specific symbols saying about other 
market. So just pencil that in June 16, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be doing a webinar on all of this process and some of the new tools. And you can see some of the arrows that are on my screen, some of the new things that we're, we're working with to make these setups that much easier to find. I'll see you in the next update. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me 